Welcome everybody to this video. In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the basics to get your rotary up and going in EasyCAD software. So the first thing you wanna do is plug it in. I have a chuck rotary I got from Omtech. It's got a standard four pin plug-in. So uh, you'll notice on the back of your fiber machine, there's a label that says rotary on it. And right there, you can use it to plug in your, your plug for your rotary, you know, whether it's chuck or even rollers. Um, it'll line up perfectly. You can just tighten it up and then go ahead and get it set up underneath your lens. There are a couple different ways to adjust uh, your rotary. So you'll notice that on the side of the rotary right here, um, this is where you can adjust the clamps that go in, in or out, which basically creates tension and holds it in place while it's rotating. There's a couple different levels, so you know use each one depending on what kind of cylinder you're using. There's also an adjustment that tilts the angle of your cylinder or object um, up or down. And this comes into play when uh, you're using something such as like a cup that tapers you know, a little bit further in and makes it more narrow towards the end of it. Um, and that way you'll tilt it up and that'll create it level with your lens and you'll get kind of a, um, a level engraving all the way around. So speaking of cups, I'm gonna use a cup as an example and show you what I mean uh, when it comes to leveling it out. Um, so now that I have it loaded into the rotary and it's on there nice and tight, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a level and try to get this level with the lens. So you see right now, um, you know, it's not quite there. The bubble's a little bit off. So I'm gonna loosen up that rotary and I'm gonna tilt it up just a little bit. You'll see how my bubble changes as I lift it just that level. That'll give me an idea of where to place it. So um, let's adjust that real quick. And there you have it. Um, I got it perfectly level. I went ahead and tightened up those bolts on the side of the rotary. Um, and now I'm pretty much ready to start engraving. So let's go ahead and start with importing a vector file. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use a logo of mine that I have um, and show you the steps it takes to actually get uh, the file turned into an engraving. So once you have your vector file loaded, uh, let's go ahead and first start by giving it a hatch. Um, for this one, I'm just gonna do the first hatch. It's just back and forth. We'll get that enabled. Um, we'll do auto distribute lines and we'll just keep it pretty basic so I can give you a good example here. So once you have your hatch settings in place, let's go ahead and rotate it uh, and size it so that way it's ready to be engraved. And once you have it in place, let's go ahead and give it the bread button so we can see and get an idea of where it's going to be placed on the cylinder. So once you have your design in place where you want it to be on the cup, let's go ahead and start with the engraving. Go up top uh, and select laser and then go ahead and open up rotary mark. Here you'll see a window that opens up that has a preview of your design as well as some functions to change. The distance per, it doesn't really matter right now. It's how much your rotary is going to jog back and forth. The split size does matter and that's how much detail it's going to give um, before it starts rotating. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and just put 0.1. Generally, the smaller the number, the more detail it does before it rotates. Um, and once that's set, go ahead and hit the red button. And this is an important factor. You want to measure the diameter of where the center of your red placement is. And that'll give you the diameter of the cup uh, for you know where your engraving is going to be. And then go back to your window and change the part diameter to your measurement. Um, here for this cup, I have 73 millimeters, so that's what I'm going to change it to. And then let's go ahead and do a test engraving. So not too bad for our first attempts. Um, you'll see on the right, there's kind of like a ghosted line, a weird effect, I'm not sure why but basically it shot out the outline of my design first and then fill it in after um, so i'm going to try another method and i'll show you how i go about doing that so let's go back to our easy cad window and then go up and select laser and then this time we're going to use split mark split mark is pretty cool there's uh, some functions on the right hand side uh, uh, up and down buttons that you can select that'll move uh, and jog your machine back and forth and if you don't want to manually 
adjust your placement for the engraving, you can do this through this window. You'll also see this time it has a smaller red outline, but that'll show exactly where it's gonna start. So let's try the engraving using split mark instead. So it looks pretty good. Um, there's no more ghosted line, which is great, but it still has some residue left over. So I'm just gonna give it one more pass just to clean things up and let's see what it looks like after. And here it is. It looks much better after that second pass, very clean lines um, and a great design. So let's go ahead and check out how to do text based. So let's go ahead and go back to our EasyCAD window uh, and let's select the text button. The text button's on the left hand side. If you just select that and then click on your screen uh, in the workspace, you'll see text pop up. I'm just gonna use text, uh, you know, the word as an example. And then uh, let's go ahead and hatch settings. I'm gonna use the same as I did before, the hatch one, and then um, we'll go ahead and place it and rotate it so that way it's sitting on the cup correctly. And once you have it placed, let's go ahead and hit that red button again and see where it lines up. You'll see it looks to be in a good spot. And we're gonna go back and do the same method and measure our, our uh, diameter where that red line is. And we're looking at 85.7 on this one. So um, let's go back to our laser section. And then instead of rotary mark or instead of split mark, let's go to the text mark, it's rotary text mark. Now we're gonna take that number that we just measured and we're gonna go back to part diameter and go ahead and, and make sure you input that number so that way it's correct again. Once you have those numbers changed, uh, let's go ahead and hit the mark button and see uh, what kind of results we get. And there you have it. That's how you do text engraving. Uh, everything turned out nice and clean. The details are tight and it looks very legible. So there you have it. These are some of the basics to get you started along your journey in learning rotary engraving. Uh, we went through three different methods that you could use to adding text and images onto a cylinder. Um, there's still a ton of different ways to go about doing it and ways to fine tune it, but this should be a good helpful push along your first steps to rotary engraving.